Hey, what's going on, everybody? Justin here, Trump Reads, and I actually got a cameraman this time. Yep. Tim. Trying my best. Yeah, you can pan, blame, it, pan yeah, it around. Yeah, blame me for any wobbles. <laughs> yeah, we're not using that. We're, this is going to be the messiest, sloppiest video ever. Um, as you guys can probably see with the room here, it wasn't all me. Sawyer did quite a bit of that earlier, <laughs> um, throwing the books yeah. off the shelves. But if you guys notice something... The bookshelves are emptier because they're all right, a bunch of right here. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be for my 1K special. I actually, I promised to do the unhaul and the reorganization and then the official like library tour at some point. And I'm trying to stay up on it. <laughs> so the first part is to get rid of some books. Right. And I, I am sacrificing these ones. Yeah, you succeeded. You've got a... Yeah, quite yeah, stuck there. I don't know. I, I'm still gonna go through these. I I don't like these are bit, some of them are for sure, but there's some that are just sort of questionable. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's just go through these kind of fast because you know, me with fifty or sixty books, that's gonna just be like right <laughs> forever and ever and ever. But yeah. So we had fun last night. So let's just get started. I guess we got the history of Russia, seventh edition by Nicholas. Ryazanovsky. That was a college textbook in Russian history is not really something I'm super interested in. Medieval Russian history is really cool, but kind of, you know, during the modern, early modern era, not so much. Yeah, it's uh, but, pretty safe. Alright, we got an encyclopedia of world history. It's just a reference book, but it's dated. It's from like the 60s or 70s. Right, yeah. Really no purpose in keeping it. I have a bunch of these international collector library edition books of like classics and stuff like this is the Iliad but they're really not they look cool but they're really not like worth anything and I think there's like 10 of them here like out and about and some of them don't really fit and I just don't really need them so yeah I'll sure rid of them. yeah they look a little now I'm gonna try and organize yeah. my piles here probably not this is gonna be just a wreck it's just gonna look like this pile just like moved over like three <laughs> right, feet yeah. I'm done um, oh well all right, so we got the report of the Agricultural Commissioner of May 1911. <laughs> I kept that as like a sentimental thing because I used it for like one of my like thesis papers in college. But you know, it's kind of yeah. yeah. Okay, Plato, the Republic of Netherworks. It's one of those book like collector books. Oh, it's already getting chipped a little bit there. Yeah, worth anything. Yeah, they're really like, cheap. A manual grammar of the Greek New Testament because I thought I would just like teach myself Koine Greek just you know overnight. As one does. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> Ned never used it. I just shouldn't. This is actually Tim's book that he gave me, but... Oh, yeah. I um, uh, I work at a library, and we get a lot of donations. Some of them we can't use, so I just gave him that with a stack of other stuff, as I remember. I don't have any intention to read it. Yeah, Burroughs. <laughs> I, I took it. I was being polite, and I'm like, nah. Eh. No, I gave it to you because uh, it, oh, I, I thought he gonna... was like kind of similar to Conan, but yeah, other than yeah. that... Let's see, we got a Sky in the Deep, which is just like a YA book that I read last year that doesn't really fit in with all my other books, and I thought it was pretty meh, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. Just one, like one of the fantasy ones I decided to get rid of. We got a textbook of ancient Greece that I'm so sad to get rid of. Not really sad. Just, <laughs> I mean, I have like 10 books called Ancient Greece or History of Greece or History of Ancient Greece or Classical Greece. Right. I just don't, might as well get rid of like the textbook one. That I never like used. I, th I assume I got it in college or something, or yeah. I think that's like an older edition. Um, getting rid of all the Harry Potter books that I have, just <gasps> I have no real intention of reading them anytime soon. You monster! What are you? What are you going to do with those Potter books? Cast them into the fire! <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Um, now I, I just don't have any intention of rereading them. So you know. I don't know. Can you be a real booktuber with no Harry Potter books on the shelf? Yeah, uh, I'll have to like. Look <laughs> Is, up the isn't manual. it a rule somewhere? There's a, there's a, there's a yeah. how to manual somewhere. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yes, isn't it one of the unwritten laws of book two that you Damn, should have I, at least I, one Potter book? <laughs> what am I going to keep? Like, which one like, looks the best? I think like the sixth one. You like, know, a bunch of them are kind of beat up. I just got my like a library sale. For, yeah, like, a yeah. Couple dollars. Okay, but yeah. That'll make someone really happy at the thrift store. I'm sure it will, yeah. So and that's how I look at it is, you know. If someone's looking for ancient Greek history or Harry Potter and they're like in the thrift store, you know, <laughs> where else are you going to find a great deal on the history of ancient Greece? You, know? you heard it here first. Um, here's a bunch more of those collector 
books. We got the Odyssey to go with the Iliad. We got Ben Hur. We got Ivanhoe. I like Ben Hur and Ivanhoe, but they just don't the really, editions are not. Yeah, they're just odd and there's nothing. They don't, I don't really know where to put them. I, I don't know where to put classics in my library because I'm. Yeah, you don't. I have fantasy and like history, but yeah. not like classic literature. Classic yeah, literature. So Canterbury Tales. And we're going to get into more about, like, primary source stuff. And again, I'm right. talking about Canterbury Tales. It's like a primary source. But when we get there, we'll get there. Don Quixote, which is probably, like, my favorite, like, you know, classic canon literature or whatever. And then Divine Comedy. So there's those. Yeah. So you've got The Stowaway by Lloyd Shapiro about uh, Paul Gavronsky, like a, a second-generation Polish-American immigrant from New York City who uh, stows away, or stowaways on Cav Commander Bird's, like, expedition to Antarctica, like, three times in a row until they finally basically say, <laughs> okay, you might as well just, like, stay. Uh, but it's kind of, I don't know, it just doesn't really fit a lot of, like, my science and exploration works, like, that much. It's more of, like, kind of a biography more than, like, an adventure. Right, right. Or, I guess. You got History of the Medieval Church by Denaisley. Um... It's a topic I need to read at some point, but this is, book is, like, really dated. It's, like, originally from, like, the 30s or something, or 25. Yeah. And it's been reprinted, like, a bazillion times. So, if, if I ever do get around to reading that you probably topic, got that from I the old uh, library giveaway back in the day, right? Yeah, yeah, that was probably at the college when, when, yeah. when I, you know, saved just to, like, send to the... So. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I might as well just get, like, one that's not as dated. Uh, we've got the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. I think I have another one somewhere. Uh, so we've got When the Wake of the Plague by Norman Cantor, one of my least favorite books of last year. I think I gave it two stars, so <laughs> pretty much anything I give, like, really bad ratings to, like, what, like, I don't, why, like, why am I bothering to keep them? Unless it's, like, the middle of a series or something. Right. I think that's the first thing to go, right? You just gotta call the stuff that's, you're not, oh, uh, no. No, don't do it. <laughs> Are you really gonna get rid of poor Geralt? Yes, he didn't yes. even stay on the pile. He's, it's and that's because he wanted to get back into your possession. Oh my <laughs> he's, a, he's ashamed to be cast off. I just did, I don't know. Everyone loves The Witcher and The Witcher games. I, I still haven't played yeah. the games, but I just didn't care for it. That yeah. Uh, yeah well. I might listen to the audiobooks, but I, yeah, I don't I'm not like gonna... it enough to buy the books. Right, so. right. You really should play Witcher 3, but yeah, apart from that. I don't uh, play games. That's my problem. Yeah. Like, I always talk a big game about playing games, and then... <laughs> Never yeah, that's it. The only games uh, I play are Dark Souls. Yeah, basically, yeah, Final Fantasy. Well, I'll put you on that one. Though. Final Fantasy. Yeah. Yes, I like Dark Souls. Bloodborne. Oh, no, so the greatest. Of yeah, I'm gonna when I do the library tour, I do a tour of this like little tiny room, but give them just like a sneak peek at my little metal posters there. Oh uh, yeah. All right now, that's enough. That's enough. All right. <laughs> just kidding. You guys will get to see everything. Yeah. Someday. It's so, like, this room is a wreck right now, because I was just, like, throwing books everywhere. And... Yeah. Uh, anyways, back to giving me the books. Okay. World War One fantasy, which sounds really cool, because i got my whole World War One shelf down here yeah. now. Oh, like, let's fuck, get It used to be over there, but I got rid of so many books, it's, like, been transferred right. over, like, a whole shelf. That does look kind of odd. Like, nice cover art, but, like, is that zombie World War One or what's happening there? Yeah, I don't know. There's, like, weird shadow werewolf things, but I think, if I vaguely remember... But it's like flash forward, flash back, flash forward, flash back. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. And that's actually the second book. I listened to the first one on audiobook because you can't, like, it's like the first book's like $30 for some reason. Oh, wow. Like, I saw this on Book Outlet for like 99 cents. I was like, yeah, World War One Fantasy. And I'm like, oh, that's what I mean. Right. Sadly, I am getting rid of my Joan Bastards except for the third one because oh, I want like nice hardcover editions because it's my favorite fantasy series. Um, yeah, and I have the hardcover in the third book, Mass Market Paperback, yeah. which they, like, when I bought it off eBay or something, they, like, just, like, listed it wrong. They gave it to me for free, I guess, so that was good. And then my deluxe edition, that like, looks terrible, like, the printing. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, it's not just my book. Like, everyone's comes out, like, really weird. There's a tower there, if you hit it, like, in the Yeah, you can see it a little bit, but, uh... It just looks odd. Yeah, I have that edition as well, and it's, uh, not as impressive as it looks online. All right. Okay, so, for primary source material... I'm getting rid of all my Penguin books, and that's so... Ugh. I'm either keeping the editions I like, like, for example, like, Polybius, I like Shuffle's like, translation, whatever, or, like, the Iliad, I like Lattimore's translations. But I'm, if I'm doing primary sources, I want, like, all these matching 
Oxford World Classics. Yeah. Instead of like kind of all these different editions of Penguin Classics that I have. You know, I can't do anything with Panda apparently. Yeah. So we got the letters of Abelard and Helios or Helios. Um Helios. <laughs> Helios. Um, which was like this weird illicit like love affair in like medieval academia. Right. Like, monks and nuns like a monk and a nun. It was just really awkward. We got pretty pretty racy at times too. So mm. that's kinda interesting. Uh, the book of Marjorie Kemp, which I really don't know much about, but it was free, so I took it. Um, yeah. Mm, I think she wrote getting like, rid of it a, without like a how-to for like her like her like semi-aristocratic son or, or something. Right. I could be like completely wrong though. Yeah, just disposing it without having yeah, read it. Much. Yeah. Um, a bunch of like philosophy works that are like primary sources, like the Principia Ethica. By George Moore. Don't know anything about it, but not going to read it. All right. Uh, Greek Ideal and Survival, um, I read. It was just kind of like a simple, like, it was almost like a monograph about just, you know, why Greek culture is, like, so cool. Uh, <laughs> well, that's but it's, like, wars, yeah. it, was, it was okay, but it wasn't, like, anything super special, but it's kind of fun. Uh, Hegel's Introduction to the Philosophy of History. Like, I'm kind of, I'm not giving up on philosophy, but I don't do it enough to, like, actually read the primary sources, except for, like, Aristotle and Plato at this point. Yeah. Uh, but, like, Hegel's, like, phenomenology stuff is, like, notoriously, like, just the most convoluted, insane, just non, not, not, not nonsense, but, you know, if you're not studying continental philosophy, like, in college, like, you know, what, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spend, like, 20 hours trying to, like, understand, like, a hundred pages. Right, it's, it's not a evening reading. Um, the function, like, and this is a good example, like, Whitehead's The Function of Reason I read last year, and it was kind of, like, I kind of got some of it and some stuff I was like, I forgot like what half those terms like were even like referring to. So it's pretty much pointless. To right, me. right. Um, so there's that Foxfire books, which are kind of like, there's like a giant series of like 20 of them or something on sort of like Appalachian, like folklore and uh, like how to's and things like that. Yeah. They're cool, but kind of a weird little it's very corner niche. thing. I mean, yeah. I'm not like outdoorsy stuff, but it, this is like really rough in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I'm pretty much roughing it. And as you can see, if you guys haven't seen this bear picture yet, you got to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, he was that that is a bear. Like, pretty much. I wish I had given. He probably was, like, waiting for me to give him a cigarette, I think. Like, yeah. That pose. <laughs> Just waiting outside. All he wanted was a light. That was it. Yeah. We got the death of King Arthur. But I, yeah. I don't. Tim is probably more knowledgeable than I am with. And I, I say probably he is 100 percent more knowledgeable than I am on King Arthur stuff. Yeah, I don't I, even know like what's canon and. Not if I could canon play some sad point. violin music at from this, getting rid of that one, I would. At, but yeah. At this point. Well, but I mean, yeah, I have, canon. I already have the Mort d'Arthur somewhere. Yeah, I, don't I mean, I don't know where it is anywhere. The nice thing about Arthur is like there's no canon really. Like, it's, just it's yeah, all kinds of stuff everywhere. Yeah. yeah, we got Shadow Divers. I think I picked up Recorder at that Fort Fairfield Library. But it's like World War Two, and I I just don't read World War Two. But I thought you know at the time I might as well buy it for a quarter. Yeah, worth the shot anyway. And yeah, I was like uh, just impulse buy, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I just don't read World War Two. Brief history of Vice. It was kind of fun, but it was just kind of a silly stuff of all kinds of crazy stuff, like how to basically trip on fly agaric if you want to, if you really want to. <laughs> That's like in here. Just you know, don't get mad at me if something happens. <laughs> um. Righteous Spring by Madras X9 is like the most highbrow cultural stuff ever of like Europe during like the generation before World War One and why it like played a part in sort of the mindset and the change or the changing mindset, you know, before, during, and after uh, the Great War. Right. And this was like so high, like this was like talking about like opera and ballet and stuff of like individual plays and everything. And I'm just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, we've got, oh, a fancy book, The Daylight War, which is the third, actually, I don't know about this one. Well, you could get, I mean, it's a pretty nice copy. Yeah, I got it for 99 cents, as you can see right there. Yeah. At the first All you need to do is get the rest of the series. Even though I know it's the third book, but. And the nice thing about Brett is his series is completed now, so. Uh, can, yeah, that's a, pl yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, I shouldn't, like, Demon yeah, cycle. as well. It's nice looking. Yeah. 
There we go. Probably, we finally saved one. That's probably really loud. Yeah, you haven't yeah. been like convincing me this. I thought you would like at least try to save. I mean, I, I already oh, got a new. I, like, like, I already got a new. Uh, what Geralt's fate was going to be. Um, I got this whole, the dictionary of the Middle Ages, which looked total swag on your shelf. Yeah. You guys have not, probably not seen. Um, and I'm missing a couple editions, and this one's like really white, like just just like sun washed or whatever. But, right. Um, I've like never used them, and they take up. Literally, like, half a shelf, probably. I'd yeah. Say. No, they are so, pretty, but it's just kind of, yeah. I've never really very situational. used them. I've, I use my my Oxford Classical Dictionary a hundred times more than I use this one for like, medieval history. I just don't, like, like look, do as many deep dives, I guess. Into stone. Yeah. Boom. All right, look at that. We're getting somewhere. We're getting there, yeah. Eusebius is... The history of the church as a primary source. This just kind of goes with like the primary source stuff I was talking about. I would just get like the Oxford World Classic, or if there's like you know like a, a gold standard translation or something. Yeah. Um, because I just got like random translations like that I've picked up over time, and I, I used to do a lot more in college like when I was doing like research papers and stuff, but like lately I just haven't been using the primary sources as much, except for like some of the Roman ones, Greek and Roman ones. So. Yeah. A lot of the English ones kind of. Hey, Josephus, uh, there's like a classical uh, Jewish um, primary source as well, but I've never like really used it either. So, and it's like giant, so it takes, it'll free up some space. We've got the poems of Tibulus. I read those like when I first got the book like forever ago, but it didn't really have that much of an impact on me. So, you know, if you guys have probably seen the, what is it's the, uh, the five foot shelf of great books of the Western world, or whatever. Oh, yeah, University of Chicago, it's, or something. Those are actually really nice when they're all in big when set, they're all together. Yeah. You, if you have matching ones, so this is Tacitus, and same thing, just primary source material. Test is pretty boring, but you know, it's good stuff if you like that stuff. Yeah, but once you've read it once, yeah, it, yeah. And then, like Plutarch, I, I like these editions actually for these ones, but it's not the whole Plutarch, this is only like probably a third. Or so Plutarch. Right. So it's like, yeah, you know. Yeah, why not? It's just uh, look for another set at some point. Uh, we got the new organ on by uh, Roger Bacon. And that's just like another like legit philosophy work. Yeah. So probably not gonna read that anytime soon. In Search of Ancient Astronomies was a book I picked up that I thought I was gonna really like, except it's I thought it'd be more on like Mesopotamian and Greek and like Roman astronomy and how they came about like calculating things and stuff and figuring out stuff but it's mostly about more like neolithic like stonehenge type astronomy not like yeah so it's yeah. not really my cup of tea so there's that the political systems of empires just looks super dense and super big and it's actually not like about i thought it was gonna be about like kind of it, the sometimes the rise and fall of the historical bureaucratic societies but i thought like that would count like rome and stuff but it doesn't like it starts in like the early modern like kind of like in the medieval period like late medieval period so right not really my cup of tea either plus looking a little through the wars there too so you know yeah am i really gonna sit and read like 500 pages of that probably <laughs> not all right so we've got jean or jean Ayol. how do you pronounce her last name a-u-l you Ayol? know to be honest Ayol? i'm not sure i've it's, always pronounced it owl or something like that but it's yeah a-u-e-l so, oh so I will. Uh, so I'm not sure. Anyways, yeah. the Clan of the Cave Bear series. Books, yeah. Um, oh, wait, we kept the first one up there, or you okay, Earth Children is the name of the series. I'm keeping the first one, um, for when I do try it, and I guess my, I'm looking at it as if I really do love it, um, I don't care that I'll have to just like re-obtain the books at some point. Uh, but I'm not exactly sure if I'm really going to, because it's kind of in like that weird spot for me, whereas I don't read historical fiction. But this is like, like, Paleolithic or Neolithic. Fiction. Yeah, I, I think it's on the cusp there. Right? It's like it's, kind yeah. of awkwardly like, it's not fantasy, yeah, obviously. But we know but so little about the time, and it's basically speculative. Yeah. So yeah. It, it'll probably, but I think it might be interesting enough for me to like be yeah. able to. I guess on the other count hand, though, it as fan fantasy. Yeah, you, you probably could. It... So that's what I'm doing. But I'm keeping the first one, and if I really like it, I won't feel bad having to like get the other ones again. I guess, and if I don't like it, you yeah. Know, well, I mean, if if it was like first in your docket, next, I'd say keep them around just for a while. <laughs> but know, yeah, but it seems like yeah. Uh, see, we got some Roman history. I'm getting rid of Caesar, <gasps> Gallic Wars, and 
Roman history. The Salas, yeah, Salas. I almost said kind of Salas, the drug effect, more than Catalan conspiracy. Roman history. Um, but like I said, I just want to get the ones I like. Yeah. And like, well, for example, like with Caesar's The Conquest of Gaul, I'm not going to get the Oxford World Classic. I'm going to get the landmark Caesar <laughs> as like my magnum office. Oh, okay, that like, makes sense. Yeah, all right. That work. Only making room for the uh, the new versions. Eh? So, <laughs> yeah. well, these things, I don't know if you guys yeah. have ever seen the landmark things. Like, those are pretty cool those looking, are yeah. like the gold standard on like those histories uh there's there's herodotus thucydides xenophons um uh Anab- anabasis and arians um campaigns of alexander and now there's caesar's conquest of all and polybius is in the works and i'm gonna i'll probably pre-order that one even if it's like 30 or 40 bucks how the Irish Save Civilization, probably my least favorite book <laughs> from last year. Probably. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. I'm keeping the Greek one until I read it, and then if I don't like the Greek one, I'll just keep Yeah, I've heard one. a lot of uh, mixed reviews of that book. Yeah. How the Irish Save Civilization, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, not great. I don't know. It's super popular, but... Yeah. Okay, I've only saved one out of all of this. We've got Aesop's Fables, kind of the same thing. I've already I've read it before. But yeah. Do I really need keeping that around? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you could always keep it around for a story. Historical or I suppose, introduction yeah. to Roman law. I vaguely want to keep it in case I do like some weird deep dive study of like Roman history and I don't have to work for like a couple months and I can just, you know, read all well, my like, really esoteric like medieval Roman history. I books. mean, my job here is to convince you to keep it if you're wavering. So just look at that uh, nice heavy blue book and i want to yeah, say all that knowledge contained well, within like oh, i like the blue ones because they're oxford i got english society in the yeah. century it would fill up a little spot on that shelf very nicely wouldn't it just uh oh actually i lied this is cambridge you know no but like look look how similar that is that's a, this is an oxford one yeah it would look pretty good on the shelf pretty good see. just saying i can't put books with my left hand back on the shelf <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I guess things I deep down, I know I'm not going to read it. Uh, I've got a bunch of books like that too, but I still keep but, them around. But I will yeah. like to say if I didn't have anything yeah. ever to do. And never life. say never. One of those, one of these days. But this is less. Like, see, I, what I, I, I think I'm going to keep it because I'm going to keep it just almost as like a reference book. Yeah. For things like, they have a chapter on like just the magistracy. Ma- right. Magistracies. Like, you know, the Adal ship, the Quaestor ship, you know. Things like that, like how those actually worked, and so yeah. I might not read it straight through. But the but yeah, I huh, saved another one. All right, huh? Saved another one. All right, it's two out of like how, yeah, exactly. however many we've done so far. See, and actually, I'm doing really good because like the original plan was me. I thought I would be like on the fence about most of them, but I think once I got in the mood, I'm just like axing everything. <laughs> yeah, and he was supposed to like convince yeah. me to actually get rid of stuff but, but yeah no yeah, I'm, I'm usually going for the things you seem like you're wavering on but you seem pretty emphatic for the most part I'm you know? like I'm yeah. just doing it like the decision is made yeah, now exactly here, yeah. yeah like I thought about it and then I'm like ah I'm getting rid of I'm even getting how this one almost has sentimental value though know, it's like literally falling apart and it came falling apart it wasn't like I wore it out like it yeah. falling apart you've reread but, it so many oh, times oh so Soph is gonna read too oh yeah there she is Hi, Sophia. <laughs> so I just want to be in the video, too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have two actual, like, legit textbooks. I also have Yemen, yeah, Yo, and someone else, the history of the Roman people. Uh, but this is, like, the Roman uh, the Romans from the village to empire by Boatwright. And it's just a legit textbook. But I've read part, most, I don't, I don't know if I, I think I read about half when I was in college. Even though I wasn't even taking, like, a Roman history course when I got it. But I bought, like, a bunch of Roman textbooks, like, on sale. Because, you know, it's me. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, but I don't need two Roman textbooks. Like, that's just kind of weird to me. <laughs> so, we'll get rid of that one. Yeah. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. Coming into the home stretch now. I can All see right. the piles. More. Well, Just a bunch kind of, of penguin histories. We've got Plutarch, Xenophon, Chaucer. Uh, Beirut, Roman to Tristan, and then Einhard and Knocker, the Stanmer's histories of Charlemagne. Yeah. Like Xenophon, I'm going to get the, a better one, or the Oxford World Classic. Plutarch, I just need to find, like, an actual nice edition. <laughs> the set, <laughs> or the whole corpus of Plutarch. Chaucer, yeah, it's like, I don't even know if I'd read that anyways. 
the Romance of Tristan, probably get like a better copy. Yeah. I, I do like it. the Romance of Tristan. It'd be kind of cool to get like one of all the different variations of the Romance of Tristan. Yeah. Tristan yeah. yeah. And they have them in pretty nice editions that you can get pretty cheap too. And then so. Einhard and Not Good to Stammer on Charlene. I have like a better one already. So I don't even need world classics. I have like four books on the Charlene. It's not weird. Hmm. But I have, of course, I can't reach it. So no. But I also, I already have, well, the complete Einhard with, like, a commentary. No, oh, nice. So I guess it doesn't have Not for the Stammer in it, but, you know, pretty cool. Um, yeah, I got Bi Byers of Charlemagne, that one, Alcuin, Friend of Charlemagne, and Isla Chappelle in the Age of Charlemagne. Wow. Like, he's, like, kind of... <laughs> his capital except he literally like campaigned every year so he was like almost never there but you know all right economic and social history of ancient greece and introduction but it's pretty dated yeah um so i like i love cats. social histories but i hate economic histories so right yeah sad day Another one for the stacks. Oh my gosh, my, my, the biggest one probably is the Oxford History of the Classical World by Boardman, Griffin, and Murray. Um, and I've not had great luck actually with the Oxford Histories. Um, it's like kind of like a series they've done with like tons of topics, but I've not really thoroughly enjoyed them. What they are, it's still like a straight up history. It's more just a bunch of like scholarly articles on different topics of the topic they're talking about. So yeah. it's not like a... Hit, uh, an essential yeah, yeah it's more just kind of part of the library not exactly really sure what the point is to be honest <laughs> um so but that our last got, three everyday life in babylon and assyria i just I'm gonna be shallow and get a better copy whenever i get around to reading about like ancient history right, like yeah. sumer and babylon and assyria in Ur three and again it doesn't seem like it's you know Next on the docket or anything like no, that. So. I, I need to get back into ancient history. Ancient history is like so slacking the past like two or three years. I'm funny. As I say that, as I get rid of that one, and then two more history, <laughs> ancient history. Uh, we got, I, I kind of want to keep them just because like they're old and kind of cool, but it's just really dated. Uh, Ross Zepp's history of the ancient world. I think he was a Russian like ancient historian before like the Soviet right. USSR thing. That's cool. Kinda. Yeah. Just, just change like you know history i don't say i mean change history but you know the way they had to write history like in the soviet union was yeah. a lot different well they're, they were free to just yeah pretty editions but yeah if it's if it's dated now who knows well things my, my thing is not that it's just dated but how many you know history of the ancient world do I can you possibly yeah use i Ancient world, civilization before Greece and Rome, history of the ancient world, history of the ancient Near East. Right. And then I got like Egypt, the Hittites, the biblical world. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's uh, so that's the mess. You guys have it. That's... And he's slowly been creating like oh. a a wall here. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see. Um, I saved two. Yep. But two have been saved. All right, let's. Look in the on survivors. the survivors, yeah. Peter Book B. Brett to the, the Daylight War, waiting for the rest of its family. And, then it and the history of the introduction to Roman law. Just because Just it... because I want to feel better about myself keeping it on the show <laughs> right. more than anything else. So here are our final two. Red and blue. Yep. Fantasy and history. Yes. <laughs> Representative of everything we've done here. Mm -hmm. well, right. I, didn't, I didn't have to get rid of any science books because they're all like newish. Yeah. Yeah, you show. I don't know if they can. can you, have you shown like the sides? Yeah, all this middle stuff is messy. We gotta do a tour at some point. Yeah, I'll do a reorganization video. But yeah, there's a lot left. That way, I can. What do you guys think? Should I do videos from this side over here too, instead of just over here? Yeah. So what do you guys think? Yeah. Um, but there you guys have it. There's what? What would you say that is like? Fifty bucks, probably. Good few, anyway. That's yeah. Gotta be at least fifty minimum. Yeah. So, they have it. Those are the 50 or 60 or whatever books that I'm unhauling officially from the Triumphal Reads right. library. Get ready to make for the, room for yeah. stuff. But look for, at this. Look yeah, at this, group for his next look, book haul, yeah. Look at this nice fantasy. Like, these three shelves look nice. And then uh, look, I got plenty of room. Oh, don't show them these. That this, this, those are those spoilers. Are the, okay. Those are the ones I have to do my book hauls with. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there you guys have it. 
Tell me what you guys think. If you're sad about any of them that I got getting rid of, you gotta leave some comments down below. If I have to save something, convince me and I'll save it. Yeah, maybe um, case. Yeah, that's yeah. all I gotta say about that. Um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'll have a reorganization video somewhat soon-ish after this one. Yeah, and then and the inevitable then... book haul video where he replaces everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we'll get on to like the library tour because I know people have asked me that for a long time, and I just have like not done it. Don't have a good reason why I haven't done it. Just because that's a lot of work. That's why it takes forever to do. Right. right. Um, but you guys have those are all the books I'm getting rid of. If you want me to save something? Convince me, or otherwise, it's going to the thrift store. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. The thrift store. So yeah. Um, so hope you guys liked the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And always remember, read the toys, leave.